हेलो एंड वेलकम वी ऑल नो अबाउट द सोशल सिक्योरिटी स्कीम एम्प्लॉयी प्रोविडेंट फंड और ई पी एफ इन शॉर्ट मोस्ट ऑफ अस पर्टिकुलरली दोज इन सैलरी क्लास वुड हैव नोटिस द वर्ड पी एफ इन द डिडक्शन सेक्शन ऑफ देयर पे स्लिप्स वी ऑल्सो नो दैट द एम्प्लॉयर मेक्स अ मैचिंग कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड दैट वी कैन विदड्रॉ द पी एफ बैलेंस ऑन रिटायरमेंट और वेन वी क्विट आर जॉब इन टूडेज वीडियो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द टैक्स ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ पी एफ कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशंस मेड बाई यू as well as your employer interest earned on such contributions and withdrawal of pf balance not all contributions are taxable conversely not all withdrawals are exempt from income tax so let's find out how all these are dealt with as per the income tax act but before we begin if you haven't already you may consider to subscribe to my channel for more videos now back to today's topic first let's understand the types of provident funds first general provident fund that is gpf in short then recognized provident fund that is rpf then unrecognized provident fund let's call it as upf in short gpf is for government employees or employees of universities etc rpf is for private sector having 20 or more employees but private organizations can voluntarily opt for rpf even if the number of employees are less than 20 private organizations have two options to open their rpf account first employer can register with epfo that is employees provident fund organization or employees and the employer can start a private trust and contribute funds to the trust and provide funds upon withdrawal if such private trusts obtain approval of commissioner of income tax then such funds would be regarded as recognized provident fund else it would be regarded as upf that is unrecognized provident fund now let's go through the tax treatment of pf contributions made by the employer as well as the employee to either epfo or private trust first in respect of gpf for government employees employers contribution is fully exempt in respect of employees contribution employees can avail deduction under section 80c with respect to rpf employers contribution to rpf is exempt up to 12% of salary employers usually contribute only 12% of salary so practically entire contribution is exempt salary here includes basic salary dns allowance and sales commission as a fixed percentage of turnover in respect of employees contribution to rpf employees can avail deduction under section 80c With respect to UPF that is unrecognized provident fund employers contribution to UPF is exempt but in respect of employees contribution employees will not be able to avail any deduction so let's summarize in respect of GPF PF contributions are fully exempt and in respect of employees contribution employees can avail deduction under section 80c in respect of RPF PF contributions are fully exempt up to 12% of salary further deduction under section 80c is available in respect of employees contribution in respect of upf pf contributions are fully exempt but employees will not be able to avail deduction under section 80c however if you have opted for alternative tax regime then you will not be able to avail deduction under section 80c next let's understand how interest that we earn on pf contributions are dealt with in the income tax act up to 31st march 2021 interest earned was fully exempt subject to certain conditions but with effect from 1st april 2021 interest would be taxable if pf contributions exceed certain specified limits let's first see what was it up to 31st march 2021 in respect of gpf interest earned up to 31st march 2021 was fully exempt with respect to rpf interest earned was exempt if rate of interest was up to 9.5% per annum usually the notified rate was less than 9.5% so practically entire interest earned was exempt up to 31st march 2021 even in respect of rpf with respect to upf interest earned was exempt with effect from 1st april 2021 In respect of GPF interest earned is exempt if employee's contribution for the year is up to 5 lakh in other words interest on contribution to the extent it exceeds 5 lakh would be taxable in respect of GPF in respect of RPF this limit is 2.5 lakh that is 
Interest earned is exempt if employee's contribution for the year is up to 2.5 lakh. In other words, interest on contribution to the extent it exceeds 2.5 lakh would be taxable in respect of RPF. With respect to UPF, there is no change. Earlier, interest earned was exempt and even now that is continuing. To understand this better, let us consider a scenario. First, let us say you are a government employee and you are covered under GPF. Let's say your PF balance including interest on 31st March 2021 was 8 lakh. Let's assume PF contribution that is employee contribution for financial year 21-22 that is from April 21 to March 22 would be 3 lakh. Let's say the rate of interest notified for the year is 8% per annum. So interest that you would earn would be 24,000. Now let's see how much of this is exempt and what's taxable. Contributions made by you for the year is 3 lakh which is within the threshold limit of 5 lakh. So the entire interest that you earn that is 24,000 would be exempt in this case. So that means no interest is taxable in this scenario. Let's consider another scenario. Let's say you are a private sector employee and you are covered under RPF. Your PF balance on 31st March 21 your PF contribution interest would remain the same. Let us now compute how much interest would be exempt and what would be taxable. In respect of RPF, interest on contribution to the extent it exceeds 2.5 lakh would be taxable. So that means up to 2.5 lakh whatever interest that you earn would be exempt. So contribution exceeding 2.5 lakh in this case would be 50,000. So the interest that you earn on 50,000 that is 4,000 would be taxable. Let us consider another scenario. Let's say you are covered under UPF. Your PF balance contribution interest would remain the same. Since there is no restriction of threshold limit in case of UPF, the entire interest that you earn would be exempt. This interest that you earn exceeding the specified limits that is 2.5 lakh or 5 lakh as applicable would be taxable whether or not you have withdrawn your PF balance. So far, we have discussed about tax treatment of PF contributions and interest earned on such contributions to the fund. Now let's talk about PF withdrawal, that is withdrawal on retirement or when you quit your employment. First, in respect of GPF, employer's contribution is exempt, interest on employer's contribution is also exempt, employee's contribution is exempt, Interest on employee's contribution is also exempt if PF contribution by the employee is up to 5 lakh for the year. In respect of recognized provident fund, employer's contribution is exempt, interest on employer's contribution is also exempt, employee's contribution is exempt and interest on employee's contribution is exempt if annual PF contribution of the employee is up to 2.5 lakh. However, this withdrawal of RPF is exempt only if you satisfy certain conditions. Let's now see what are those conditions. First, you should be in a continuous employment for 5 years or more. That is, you should have been employed for a continuous period of at least 5 years in one or more organizations having RPF account. Period of employment with the previous employer is also considered if your PF balance is transferred from previous employer to the current employer. To understand this better, let's say you were employed in ABC Limited. You had joined this organization on 1st Jan 2019 and you quit this job on 31st December 2021. So your period of employment with ABC Limited is 3 years that is from Jan 2019 to December 2021. Let's say before this you were associated with PQR Limited. You had joined PQR Limited on 1st July 2016 and you quit this on 31st December 2018. So your period of employment with PQR Limited is two and a half years. So your total period of employment would be five and a half years if your PF balance in PQR Limited was transferred to the PF account of ABC Limited when you joined ABC Limited. So if you withdraw your PF balance after 31st December 2021, PF balance would not be taxable because you have completed a total period of employment of at least 5 years. However, you will be able to apply for withdrawal online only after completing 60 days from the day you quit ABC Limited. Second condition is if you quit your job due to reasons beyond your control, say ill health, discontinuance of business by your employer 
or completion of project for which you are hired etc then withdrawal of pf balance would not be taxable third condition is if you transfer your pf balance to your nps account that is national pension scheme which is a retirement saving scheme if you satisfy these conditions then withdrawal of pf balance would not be taxable if you don't satisfy any of these conditions then withdrawal would be taxed similar to unrecognized provident fund we'll shortly discuss tax treatment in respect of unrecognized provident fund further tax would be deducted at source at 10% if pf balance is 50000 or more but this tds provision would not apply if your pf account is with a private trust in other words if your pf account is maintained with epfo that is employees provident fund organizations then tds provisions would apply if it is with a private trust then tds provisions would not apply and pf deductions that you have availed under section 80c would be treated as taxable income now let us see how withdrawal from unrecognized provident fund account would be taxed in respect of employers contribution it would be taxed as a salary income interest on employers contribution is also taxable as salary income employees contribution is exempt and interest that you earn on your contribution that is employees contribution would be taxed as income from other sources to summarize in respect of gpf and rpf contributions as well as interest earned and pf balance withdrawn or exempt subject to certain conditions in respect of upf contributions and interest earned are exempt but pf balance withdrawn except employees contribution would be taxable now let's understand how can you plan better so that you take full benefit of exemption and you don't end up paying any tax first restrict your pf contributions that is employees contributions to 2.5 lakh or 5 lakh for the year 2.5 lakh for private sector employees and 5 lakh for government employees next when you switch your job try to transfer your pf balance from your previous employer to current employer instead of withdrawal if you would like to withdraw then withdraw your pf balance only after you complete 5 years of continuous employment however this restriction is not applicable for certain conditions like ill health partial withdrawal etc partial withdrawal is permitted for specific reasons like education marriage medical purpose etc if you avail pf deductions under section 80c then it would not be appropriate for you to opt for alternative tax regime if you would like to know more about alternative tax regime you may consider watching my earlier video lastly for nps account holders if you don't intend to withdraw your pf balance then transfer your pf balance to your nps account nps is national pension scheme your contributions to nps would fetch you monthly pension after retirement hope this video was helpful if you enjoyed this episode you may like the video you may spread knowledge by sharing this video with others thank you for watching